Welcome to the lesson on water cycle. At the end of this, Ouch! Why did you push me? I didn't push you. You were in my way. Look, Mr. Droppy. That's my name. Look, I'm too tired to fight with you. Hey, look, Droppy. I don't want to fight with you either. By the way, I'm Drippy. Why do you look tired? After traveling through a network of pipes, I guess anybody will be tired. Where have you come from? I've come all the way from the Rayleigh Lake. I know that. I'm from there too. That's the lake that supplies water to the city. Does the city have other sources of water too? Oh yes, ponds, wells, streams and rivers supply water to the city. Aren't you aware of this? Well, this is my first visit to the Rayleigh Lake. Until yesterday, I was a part of the Azure Sea. Huh? How did this change of address from the sea to the lake take place? Through the water cycle. Oh, so you used a water cycle to travel from the sea to the lake? Oh no. This water cycle isn't the cycle you're thinking of. It's the circulation of water between water bodies such as oceans and seas and land. It's through this water cycle that I became a part of the Rayleigh Lake. Interesting. I would love to know more about the water cycle. As I said, I was a part of the Azure Sea. I used to stay at the bottom of the sea floor. Life was lovely out there. And mind you, I used to be quite different. A variety of salts like sodium chloride, calcium, magnesium and potassium were present inside me. One day, I decided to move up the sea floor and discover the outside world. So, there I was, floating on the sea surface. The sun was at its brightest best, and I was enjoying its warmth. Suddenly, I started feeling giddy. You see, I was beginning to evaporate. Beginning to what? Evaporate. You see, when heat is applied to water, it starts turning into vapor. This process is called evaporation. In my case, the heat of the sun turned me from water into water vapor. Why didn't you choose a shady place? At least you wouldn't have evaporated. That would have made no difference. How could that be? Drippy, do you know that the sun warms up the surrounding air as well? The temperature of the atmosphere would have caused me to evaporate anyway. Only it would have taken place at a slower rate. Because evaporation takes place faster in direct sunlight than in a shady area. How did you feel after converting into water vapor? I felt lighter. As the salts present inside me were left behind in the sea. What happened after you became water vapor? Well, I was carried away by the warm air that was filled with water vapor. Where did this water vapor come from? From all the places wherever water was present, including wet clothes, fields, oceans, ponds, and plants as well. Water vapor from plants? How's that possible? Well, plants take in water to grow as well as to prepare their food. They retain the water they need and release the excess water into the air as water vapor 
through leaves and the stem. This process is called transpiration. So you were inside the warm air that was filled with water vapor. Good for you. Drupi, did you enjoy your stay inside the warm air? No. It was quite nasty out there. I was sweating pretty heavily. But things started improving when the warm air, which was lighter than the cold air, started rising up and became cooler. Now, how does the rising up of warm air cause it to cool down? Drippy, as we move higher from the surface of the earth, it begins to get cooler. Naturally, when warm air rises, it also starts to cool down. Did you shiver once the temperature dropped down? No, but me and the rest of the water vapor started condensing, or rather, we started turning into tiny water droplets. And soon, there were millions of water droplets floating in the sky. I wonder how the sky must have looked like with those millions of water droplets floating around. Well, the droplets appeared as a cloud. Now, if a billion water droplets are floating up there, it sure will appear like a crowd. Drippy, I said cloud, not crowd. You mean that the white, fluffy, cotton-like stuff one sees in the sky actually contains tiny droplets of water? Yes, and all these droplets collect to form bigger drops of water. Some of them may become too heavy to remain in the sky, and fall down as rain. Do you know that I could have been converted into hail or snow? You as hail or snow? That's difficult to imagine. Well, if it were really very cold, I would have become snow or hail. Instead of a water droplet, and would have settled maybe on the top of a mountain. After melting, I would have become a part of a river or a stream. The river would have either joined the lake, or would have become a part of the azure sea. But the reality is that I turned into water, and became a part of the Rayleigh Lake. What happened to the other raindrops? Did they land in the Rayleigh Lake too? No, some of them fell on the ground and flowed into the rivers and streams dotting the city. I also saw raindrops seeping into the ground, where they formed groundwater. So water that evaporates comes back to the earth in the form of rainfall, hailstorms, or snow. Yes. And this circulation of water is called the water cycle. Congratulations! You have successfully completed this lesson on water cycle. In this lesson, you have learned to explain the water cycle.